just talked yesterday to I think Jason Barrett about yeah, that. Yeah, so we're uh, we're looking forward to it. It's just not that it's confusing, but sometimes um, I'm met on the street and say, "Oh, you're with the Martinsburg Council." Right. No, Berkeley. You know, and it's just not that it's a bad thing. I just um, I just think it would be more. Um, conducive to get back to a commission well, and, it, and it is it is confusing yeah. because i i mean i call it council i call it commission then i'm trying to remember which is which we are now which we were which we're going to be yeah. yeah other than changing a lot of paperwork i think it uh it will uh, it'll be an easy transition so. well if you need a printer panhandle printing in martinsburg they can they can do all the transition for nice you nice doing a little phenomenal for heights, huh? michael height my friend they're amazing panhandle printing well heights away bodwell will promote very nice and uh county administrator alan davis alan good morning to you morning i need to get the appropriate microphone up for you good yo good morning again i sir. said good morning <laughs> <laughs> happy happy new year very nice uh how's the uh how's the rehab going there it's good Yep, it's been um, two months into it now, and to the point where I'm ready to to do it all over again. So, and that's a knee replacement. Uh, it is. So, you know, I must be a glutton for punishment, but uh, anxious to get it done and behind me before um, warm weather sets in. Well, all the best to you. Rehabbing uh, anything isn't uh, easy, and then to go through it again shortly thereafter is not fun. But uh, I know you're doing the best you can. With I am. Yeah, very good. So, uh, I, I don't know, Did you? Did, was there an announcement yesterday? Did, did, did anything uh, come out? Because I'm hearing rumors here. Well, you know, um, you know, and, and I've said for many, many years, the, the good news is we're a small community. The, the bad news is that we're a small community. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody knows your business. Everybody knows everything. So, um, it, it, it was not supposed to be official until Thursday. Uh, it was not supposed to be public until Thursday, but um, last last Thursday, uh, I uh, informed the council, uh, my staff, and, and my direct report department heads that um, I intend to retire on, on June thirtieth, June the third this year. Yes, sir. And this is it. That's it. No additional employment someplace no, else no, on no, the side. No, no, I said, you yeah. know, I've, I've, my wife and I've talked it over, and I said, when I retire, you know, I, I'm done. No DoorDash, you know, no Uber Eats, nothing well, like that. Well, you know, that. I may come on as a guest host here every now and then, but, you know. We're always looking for people. Yeah, I figure if Stubblefield can do it, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the line we all measure right. by. You know, if, 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 that's your, is that, if that's what you're using this as a benchmark, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bill's listening. Yeah, I know he is, I'll, too. I'll, that's I'll why, I, that's why I put listening. the plug in. <laughs> well, congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, anything go into this decision other than it's just time or you, you know, I've I've worked, um, you know, and, and, and I just became Social Security eligible last year. And when I pulled my Social Security um, earning statement, it, it, it dawned on me that I've I've worked since I was 15 years old. Um, I've never not worked. Um, and I've been in, in local government now for 42 years um, and and had never, ever had an uh, never really thought about retirement and and my wife and i've talked it over a, a number of times and she's very supportive of of anything i decided to, to do and um i you know i've often told her when i thought it was time it would be time and it's no other reason than than it's time it's certainly not a reflection of of this council um you know the timing has nothing to do with with Jim and, and uh, Vice President Gokenauer, the two new council members, um, certainly did not have, have any issues with them, don't have any issues with them. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm very blessed. You know, I told, told my wife, I said, you know, I've got a job that I love. I have people that um, I enjoy working with and, and I'm not being forced out. So maybe, maybe it's time. So, Jim, your your thoughts on Alan's tenure? You know, it's uh, like any business, and, and I like to refer the county as we try to do business and do it right for the citizens of the county, make sure that we're fiscally responsible and that their money goes to the right places. And, and Alan has been a tremendous asset when it comes to, you know, making sure our numbers are correct. I don't think there's a, a page in our budget that he doesn't know what the final numbers are at any given day. He's that uh, astute on top of it. And... With that being said, um, the county is in a position that uh, we are, we have grown and continue to grow. We're doing well. Our 
Uh, Rainy Day Fund is over seven. Over seven million now, seven point four. And I, th- I think it was eight cents when Doug took over. <laughs> well, it was less than five dollars <laughs> when uh, when we started, and um, and our uh, contingencies. I mean, you know, and, and we are going to definitely miss Allen. Uh, but we still have him for a few more months, even though he's going to have a little bit of rehab going on. But uh, we're, we're, I'll have his number if I need him, and he has mine if he needs me. So I just want to publicly thank him for his service to our county, that he has um, he has contributed his his life to us as as um, as our administrator and and done a fantastic job. So he will be missed, and no better time than, go, they always did say, go out on top. And uh, he is, we are definitely at the top of, uh, of the state when it comes to the 55 counties. I, I believe Berkeley County is, is uh, head and shoulders, um, uh, not above the rest, but we are head and shoulders looking at the rest. I know you guys don't like to discuss personnel actions in public here, but Gary Wine has been the deputy administrator. Is that a natural progression for Gary, or will you go outside the system to look? You know, in all fairness, uh, uh, Gary has been a tremendous asset, and uh, he, I shouldn't say has, is a tremendous asset. Uh, he will he, he will have a, uh, a, a role to play, you know, without a doubt. I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't maybe advertise, but uh, nothing has been decided. I'm just one voice, so we're going to talk about it, uh, I'm sure, in executive sessions, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely make a decision. Very good. You know, the, the, the good news is, you know, an, an organization should not be dependent. The success of an organization should not be dependent on any one person. I, when, when I step aside, it's it's not going to make it's not going to make a difference. Um, the council is the county um, at the count with the council's uh, direction is is truly ba- blessed to have the uh, professionals that they that they have in place. And you know, I would be I would be remiss not to say that Alan took a tremendous part in in our department heads and hiring of those people, and he is correct. We do have great department heads that have um, stepped up and and continue to do that every day. So go ahead, so, Alan. You know, I'm sorry. Our, our our office staff, starting with you know Penny Shul, who's the office administrator, uh, and and Tracy and Julie and. Um, you know Gary Wine and Mike Lang and you know all the folks that you've had on you know, on the show at one time or another. They they are bright and shining stars, um, and and I will put um, the council's staff um, up against anyone in the state or in the quad state state area. I mean, you have no idea the level of expertise. Um, and the dedication to the county that that we have here, you know, I keep telling the council how fortunate they are that um, that that they have the right people in the right places at the right time. The the growth of the county will continue in in the the um, the, the, the leadership is in place that it it it, it th- there won't be a problem. Alan, let me ask now: How many years has it been? How many years have you been the county administrator? I have been with uh, Berkeley County over the 18 years uh, when I retired. I've been county administrator since 2014. Now, let me ask you this. When you first got here, roughly, I know you're a numbers guy. When you first got here, roughly what was the county's budget and what is the county's budget now? Um, when, I, when I came here in 2005, um, the county's budget was slightly more than $20 million. Um, this year with... Uh, you, the the budget that we set starting July first was about forty six million, and with the with our in, in, with the the non recurring revenue that that we get through grants and things like that that I don't factor into the budget, um, we'll go over fifty million this year. What are uh, what are some of the biggest? I mean, what are some of the biggest accomplishments that you've seen in this county since you have been county administrator, which I guess has been almost nine years now. Um, you know, the list is, the list is long. Um, you know, we, you know, our finances were, were in trouble when I, when I came here. I mean, we were three and four months in arrears and paying some of our bills. Uh, I remember, you know, times getting a, you know, call on, on Friday afternoon from our health insurance, uh, provider saying if we didn't, with, we were three months in arrears for our own health insurance payments. And if, I didn't pay if we didn't get a, a payment into them that you know our claims wouldn't be paid for the for the weekend. So, um, you know we we pay all of our bills within um, you know about seven working days now. We do have a rainy day fund established. 
Um, we've added 22 career firefighters, um, again, uh, led by Councilperson uh, Gokenauer and then uh, Councilperson Stubblefield. They, they kind of led those efforts. We're the only um, county fire department in the state. Uh, and, and, you know, we've, you know, I, and I keep telling our department heads, you know, we should be the benchmark that everyone is compared to. And, and we've become that. Um, you know, our day report center, um, we started our day report center in August of 2016 with three employees and um, six participants. We now have 44 full-time employees, four part-time employees, and over 300 participants, um, which not only has saved lives, kept families together, uh, but has saved us a tremendous amount of money through the reduction of our regional jail bill. So. Uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of this organization. Um, we, we truly have led the state and, and in some ca ca cases the nation in some of the, the more innovative things that we've done. Jim, you were part of the council when the idea of the Day Report Center was introduced. And I remember Doug talking about a net savings of a million dollars on the jail bill because the jail bill at that time was escalating and becoming a bit uncontrollable, too. And since the advent of that day report center, those numbers have come true. Doug, Doug knew what he was talking about. He sure did. Uh, the, uh, the jail bills right now, gosh, I, I don't think that they've escalated any further than what they were back, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, but the savings that we have created to keep them from escalating has been well over two and a half, three oh, million easily. dollars, easy a year, a year. Uh, a year. And, and I say, uh, you know, and I'm pretty confident in saying we're of the 55 counties, um, we're probably the only county in the state that has actually seen our regional jail bill decline for the past five five consecutive years. With the population that we it's have, it's not because crime has gone it, down. It no. is not. No, um, but you know, you you know, we're keeping nonviolent offenders. Um, out out of the, the Eastern Regional Jail, and and you know the intent when 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 Doug and Dan and and the other council members decided to start Recovery Resources and Day Report Center, the intent was not to save money. The intent was to um, save lives. To save lives, you know, to give people not a handout but a hand up, uh, and you know, keep families together, keep people employed, and you know. You know, I, I am so proud to say that they were that they were they were right. Um, and Tim Zaya, who has been our director from day one, has just done uh, just done a phenomenal job. Um, we just recently became a, a licensed behavioral health uh, center uh, in the fall of last year. We now have eight full time therapists uh, on staff. Um, we we can bill Medicaid. Um, because of, of the, the certifications and the licensures that we have. Um, next fiscal year, if not this fiscal year, next fiscal year through get grants and the, the funds generated through uh, you know, it, it, a number of things that, services that we provide in Medicaid billing, um, our day report center has a, a budget over, over $2 million will be self-supporting. There will be no local tax dollars that goes into the support of our day report center, which is just, just, just incredible. I can't say enough about that. That's amazing. Jim, let me ask you, as uh, the new head of the county council, see, I got it. It does confuse me. It does. Um, what do you want to see happen this year? What's the big thing you want to see? Big things? Oh, gosh. You know, to continue the progress that we have made and uh, and to be, um, and have been part of it and still be part of it, uh, the uh, the economic growth of Berkeley County, I don't see it, you know, going behind. I, I only can see it, you know, moving ahead and uh, at, a, at a pace that may be a little bit slower, but this area has not always been hit as hard with uh, economic downturn as, as other areas of the country. So um, I haven't really thought a whole lot about the big things other than we have still have a lot to do on our plate to keep up with what we've got going on. I mean, I know we have some, we have some big issues. I yes, mean, we, we have do. Some infrastructure issues. We have, you know, Route Nine mm -hmm. heading west. That's you know, like Rockville Pike at this point. Oh yeah. And we have. I, I know a guest we had on a few weeks ago. And I can't remember who it was. Mentioned, you know, maybe there are some businesses we have not been able to attract because of water. 
and you know having making sure we have the the right amount of water and stuff like that well the the water is there the treatment of it is is what, thank you is yeah is what may be the um issue. Uh, the issue are we looking at expanding our water treatment facilities yes uh, well the i'll leave that to the uh to the water department or the uh the water board right. to, to come up with all the the final is it or the i should say fine tuning of my answer but yeah they are they're working towards it the infrastructure bill that passed in um in our state, um, they have a uh, they have a, a big want list, and uh, so I'm hoping that uh, with our legislation delegation, that we can uh, we can support that to, you know because we do need it. So, Amanda, we have some. There are some water systems on the southern side of the state where they basically have pal- they, they they don't have palatable water, right. but they've also had have such a dearth of public population at this point that. You know, it's millions and millions of dollars to, you know, have have water for 20 people. The, the council last year um, did designate did designate some of our ARPA funding um, to the water department to help with um, infrastructure upgrades. Um, the Potomac River plant uh, is in is in need of upgrade, uh, as well as, um, you know, there's I, I, at last count, and I'm sure with inflation, that number has gone up. I know the water department has about a $220 million, uh, $220 million worth of, of improvements that they would like to make. Uh, a lot of that being on the south and southwest side of, of Martinsburg. Um, so it, it, it's a big ask and I know that um, the water department's been working with the state of West Virginia. Um, the council has uh, designated some of, the, uh, some of their ARPA funds to to the water department to be used as leverage for grants from the state. So I know they are actively working on um, upgrades and expansion of the water of the water system. Alan Davis, County Administrator and the President of the Berkeley County Council, Jim Whitaker, in studio uh, with us here. Uh, one of the things that was in the news last week and had to do with uh, fireworks and who's going to be paying for those uh, this year and where those fireworks will be, Jim. Well, it's uh, it's a great pleasure to announce that uh, CMC, which is a new industry coming to Berkeley County at the um, the old Dupont location, that will be uh, providing uh, through the pilot program. It will be um, um, a, a substantial amount of money in order for we're calling it naming rights for the fireworks show that uh, we were talking about it last night at the airport authority meeting because that's where it'll be held again. Uh, we're looking to um, get a lot of vendors to come out there. The first show that we had last year, it was surprising uh, that not that we weren't prepared for the for the event, but you know it was overwhelmingly supported. But half the county turned. <laughs> yeah, yes, and that road did. doesn't fit half the county. No, uh, at logistics, we got some things to work out, and we're talking about them. We just got to make sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to ingress, egress, and um, and safety. So the uh, the thought was that uh, we will continue to do that. Um, hopefully, we're going to pick a date whether we want to do it either before the fourth or the weekend of with the first. I mean, that's that's still you know logistics to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, then the next thing is in August will be the air show. Um, maybe um, combining some forces there again for possibly naming rights on on the uh, the great air show. So. The legis- always looking for good sponsors. So. Oh, as we all are. Yeah, the- always looking for good sponsors. <laughs> the legislature convenes tomorrow for the first time to begin the 60-day legislative session. The governor will give a state of the state speech tomorrow night. From a county perspective, Jim and Alan, what are you looking for from the legislature this session? Our, our, our biggest ask is um, some some type of, if, if, if they couldn't eliminate the regional jail per diem rate that we pay, at, at least cap it at, at, at where it is now. Um, you know, we, we, we've allocated about $3.5 million towards the regional jail bill this, this current fiscal year. Um, I, I keep thinking of if, if we didn't have to, to pay that, what we could use that money for. Um, as you know, um, th- through West Virginia Code, um, the council is restricted how they can raise revenue. Um, you know, we have the property rollback provision, um, which is which is three percent, which um, absolutely is uh, adversely affects high growth counties like like ours. Um, the council, for a, a number of years, has asked that uh, the rollback be increased from either three percent to ten percent, if not eliminated altogether. And in the absence of that. 
um, you know, give give the local leader some latitude uh, on a county by county basis, maybe to impose a a one percent sales tax. Um, we have about a between eighty and ninety thousand vehicles a day that go up and down Interstate eighty one. It's the second busiest. Um, north to south interstate, uh, east of the Mississippi, second only to Interstate 95. Um, and we could really capitalize on, Getting on that, that 1%, sales, that one, tax. 1% sales tax.